Thank you for joining me. I am going to be discussing Emerson Bar Review Expansion on contracts. This is our one day one of contracts. Now, uh, with this particular one, I watched it and then took notes. And it was a little bit difficult for me because normally, I, I actually have a contracts law um, outline and this kind of goes in the face of that so I put in some notes about that but basically what he does on the introduction is he talks about a couple of different essays that he wants you to download and have with you and he doesn't name the year of the essays but he names Motors versus Jones and so on and so forth so I'm gonna go look for those videos I mean those those essays that he's talking about because I actually have a data a bank of contracts essays and things like that so I, I'm going to I'm going to go through them but so it's from this video and I'm going to also put the contracts playlist below So basically he's organizing six issue areas or segments of where they're going to test on the bar, the kind of questions they have. He took random samples of a dozen essays. He looked at all the issues. He said 90 to 92 percent, you know, good percentage of them are basically on formation issues. And then the others are on, so he's basically, excuse me, trying to tell you how to get to know what they're going to be testing you on probably and I say probably so he breaks it down and then he he talks about the different areas so I wrote down the areas he wrote and this is a sort of like a plan of attack it's not your typical outline it's the most tested issues on the essays so a, a good percentage of them are basically formation so you know do you have a contract and uh, he doesn't really get into you know what is UCC what is common law or the definitions but I will do this later on but I did add this in because he's not showing you know the uh, details of the concepts on what is a contract as much but if, if you watch it um, I, th I thought this would be helpful for common law q-tips quantity time identity of parties price and subject matter so basically so the first area is formation the the main issues that are going to come up on the questions Okay, so this is just an overview of the ideas, the concepts that are most tested. And he gives a couple of ex examples. I'm just going to give you a brief synopsis of what he's covering. And then you can watch it if you want or if you, you know, whatever. But I'm just going to go over this real quick. And then we'll get into more details in subsequent videos. So when you're looking at these essay questions... 10 to 15 percent might be on clarification of the terms the issues that come up with that parole evidence rule he says or peril so this is what what is said outside of the contract or surrounding the contract but wasn't written into it normally if it's not written into it it's not um I actually snipped something for this. With the peril evidence, evidence rule, uh, there are two schools of thought. And when he shows the examples in subsequent videos, PER will come up and then I'll explain about that. But basically there's two theories uh, and a majority and min minority theory about you know the four corners of the contract and the introduction to uh, contextual or the evidence that's not written 
in the contract and uh, so these inferences that could be made about the contract so I just wanted to show you that and then the other area besides clarifying the terms and um, it's changes to the contracts so when you're clarifying the terms uh, these questions will come up about that there's also going to be changes to the contract and then he said there's four ways that you can change the contract the parties can be uh, changed or the, the terms can be changed and with the terms it can have a modification or a waiver and this can be a waiver of the conditions Conditions can lead to, uh, these conditions uh, that lead to performance issues. So a condition is something that must occur or the other party is excused from performance if it doesn't occur. Uh, there's express conditions, constructive condi conditions, more on this in another video. Emerson also says that there's four ways to change the people in the contract. Assignment of rights, delegation of duties, novation, or revoke the rights of a third party beneficiary. He also expands uh, with an example about a party that's selling a one of a kind polka dot car for 100k. And um, I'm not going to go into that too much. I'm just going to skip over it. Uh, I just want to make this short and sweet this time. Breach is also discussed. That's a big one. <clears throat> and then uh, I'll tell you what I'll put these notes in below if they'll fit the other one is remedies I actually put timestamps in here as to where he's talking about it and I will have the link to the specific one hour video and also the playlist and then the remedies you know, once the breach is established, what are the remedies? What re re remedies are available? And he said there's two types. Legal remedy usually means money, and it's for that and nothing else, with two exceptions. That is ejectment from real property, that's kick off the property, or replevin, that's getting back the personal property, like a one of a kind. He used the example of Mona Lisa painting. And then there's the uh, equitable when money won't do and he said cancel contracts hardly ever come up but put it in there he said if you get a bar question asking about the rights of the parties in the contracts it's usually asking about the legal remedies and <clears throat> if they ask specifically about re remedies they are referring to the equity quite often so uh, now, quasi-contract, where you don't have a contract, he gives an example of somebody painting a house. They paint the wrong house. The person's sitting on a chair watching them paint the house. I've actually heard this before um, in slightly different contexts. Maybe it was a question I read. And the party lets them go ahead and paint the house and then basically blows him off like you painted the wrong house and it was his house and it's like well should he pay for that yes he, sh he 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 can be forced to pay the contractor that made a mistake and painted the wrong house but he can't pay get get uh more than just um paid for the value of the service in other words, he can't have a big profit off of it by making a mistake, but he can be paid for reasonable value of the services. Now, he said there was an exception to that, like if a contractor is building a complete house, house catches fire, the contractor typically takes out insurance, and they're going to have to rebuild the house. So, uh, so painting is different, or doing, you know, something... Uh, like painting half of a boat and then the boat sinks you still get paid for the services whatever amount that you paid it's um, 
it's just the way it is in all fairness for the law. Okay, that's it. I want to thank you for listening. I will come back with more details tomorrow. Take care. Bye.